Hi everyone, today I am here with Maya from Enlightened. And the funny thing is, I haven't really known Maya for that long. Like it's been maybe like two months, mm. two and a half, three months. And but just like all the way from the beginning, we just immediately hit it off. She's come to some of my meditation sessions, which has been really great. And she's doing a job which is really, really important, which is to create a space for spiritual practitioners to come together and express themselves which I think it's a really it's a really um god-given job that she has been <laughs> taking on which is really powerful and I think before I continue speaking because I think I could probably talk about you because I already feel like I know you like a sibling <laughs> um but I think it's best that you introduce yourself what it is that you do and also why is it that you do it of course so I'm Maya that you said it right. Um, I am I am many things, actually. I was going to say I'm the founder of Enlighten, but it's always like difficult to kind of like define what's I, right? But I'll just go with, I am the founder of Enlighten. Um, it's a platform um, that is bringing together spiritual practitioners, that is um, listing offerings, events, one-on-ones, and also helping seekers discover, you know, um, accessible uh, like modalities, discover modalities, discover practitioners that are near them, connect with you guys, and and just get on on their path more easily. Um, Enlighten is really like born from I think a deep sense of gratitude that I had while going through my own spiritual journey my own awakening which was like very very difficult at the beginning but then it was only once I kind of discovered this alternative world which shouldn't be alternative um, that I finally started to to see the light you know at the end of the tunnel it's only by meeting people starting to work with healers starting to immerse myself in those communities and and just talking with other people that were also on the same path that I finally realized well wait there is something more to this world there is I'm not crazy you know my senses were right like I could sense that there was something more there is something more and just doing energy work meditation breath work sound healing has personally helped me a lot and so I wanted to kind of like bring that, give back by, by building something that will help more people discover that more easily, basically. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a really, it's a powerful mission to take on, you know, and we are quite a motley crew of people as well. <laughs> so there's a lot of, I can imagine there's a lot of interesting personalities to have to manage as a person who's managing <laughs> um, this platform. What was it that you know, what was it that really inspired your spiritual journey? Like, what was the, if you can, is there a moment or was there many moments? Like, what was it that really, truly parachuted you into this space? And perhaps at the beginning, even made you feel a bit ungrounded. Like, what was it that started that journey? Um, It's really funny because I was just reflecting back on that yesterday. And what I found is that, you know, since childhood, there were like many moments that you know of questioning of deep realization certain dreams certain events that have happened that kind of like you know already made me start thinking about that so mm. since very early on i was always drawn at least to the philosophical side of life you know like mm -hmm. i wasn't i was never a very practical person like i was always living i would say in between the visible and the invisible which i didn't know you know it was that so I was always in my head, oh, never here, never really grounded on earth. Um, but you know how it is, you know, like you grow up, people say you're crazy for thinking there is something more. And then like you just come back to it. Um, and I think for me, what kind of like triggered me to go back on that path was um, the failure of my old startup. So I, I had I was building something else and I genuinely thought it was my life purpose I you know I thought it was my passion I, I made it my life I made it my identity I I made it my all and for about two years I was really battling to to take it off the ground and um and it was very very important for me and I guess like when that failed when it collapsed 
it triggered something in me where I was like, wait, like th this is not it, you know, like th there is something more. And, and I, I kind of like went through like a deep period of questioning, you know, and then, um, I, I did the psilocybin ceremony where I just, I was hammered onto the other side. You know how it is. Like, it's kind of like, okay, I had this deep period of questioning and then all of a sudden I'm taking, you know, this, this beautiful, wonderful plant medicine that has opened up, you know, my, my senses and my world into, into something completely different. And I think it was after that specific experience where um, it still took me some time. I went through a very dark period uh, otherwise known as the dark night of the soul um, about for about a year um, before really awakening and kind of like, you know, starting to meditate, starting to do sound healing, starting to do all of these things. Mm. And what do you think was it that enabled you to become more grounded again? You know, because I think, I think your experience is very common. It's very typical mm -hmm you have some sort of spiritual awakening moments and then you step into what a lot of people call the dark night of the soul mm. and uh, the worry maybe or the fear way maybe <laughs> is that you stay mm. there yeah you know exactly. you stay in that energy luckily a lot of people are in, able to ground themselves and find guides and healers and people to support them through that what was your how did you come back down to earth yeah. I think so for me I remember like I was I was kind of like flirting with the idea of starting to meditate for a long time and I never really I never really thought that uh I would be able to do it I I don't know there is this thing where people kind of like not vilify the notion of meditation but they make it into something like so hard you know it's like oh no or or like almost like uncool it's like oh no I'm an overthinker this is the cool thing you know like I can never meditate you know what I mean like there is a lot of and I was in that phase at that point I was like no no no, no. like my mind works so much and so fast and I think a lot I'll never be able to meditate um I came across Joe Dispenza actually and right. you know uh how he talks about the, the power of visualization how he changed his life through it how he has been able to heal himself through it and I think that highly like spoke to me because you know being at in the deep ends of my own life I was like okay well perhaps <laughs> I should use my mind to create a new life for me as I remember the very very first time I meditated was a Drew Dispenza meditation and and I think from there I started reading one of his books I started like, you know, listening to many of his podcasts and you know how it is. One thing leads to the other. I remember one day I just randomly discovered this video on YouTube. I think, you know, the divine speaks through YouTube sometimes uh, where it was saying the seven stages of awakening. Um, and I clicked on it and it explains like everything. And, and it was saying, you know, that in order to get through it, you should do like, you know, things like breath work, meditation, sound healing and things like that. And so this is what allowed me to, to come back down, let's say. Mm. So you were saved by the divine algorithm, basically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the, I, 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 yeah, by the cosmic, you were saved by the cosmic mm. algorithm. That's yeah. a good sentence, isn't it? I need to write something about the cosmic algorithm. That's a funny. That is a funny <laughs> but that's sentence. That's true. That's true. Like sometimes you're on your phone and you just like see something. Even on Instagram, you know, like on on YouTube, on I don't know. Those are the platforms that I use the most. But like, you know what I mean? And and it's just like, okay, wait, actually, um, and it just all makes sense. It just all makes sense, yeah. Mm. So you've been on this spiritual journey for what two years, three years? Two years, yeah. I three think it was, it was yeah. Triggered. Uh, uh, triggered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is your, what is your current main challenge with your spiritual journey? I think it's definitely integrating like my spiritual gifts and kind of like accepting them as part of who I am. I think, you know, it's very funny because my journey was 
um, there was it was a lot about grounding myself and integrating myself back into earth like I know that a lot of people struggle with you know coming back like going up you know from the practicality of earth for me it was the other way around like wh when I reflected back on it I think that I kind of like you know there was a bit of dissociation but I kind of like checked out from my life very early on because you know growing up I was um like always different somehow I would always be in my head I would always be you know the annoying kid in class like asking so many questions and getting kicked out and like you know and, and just like I wouldn't I had a lot of friends but I couldn't really understand them and they couldn't really understand me and so I was always feeling very lonely and so I created this kind of like life in my head like in, in the other side I was live, living living on the other side and as the more I go through my my spiritual journey the more I realize and I think that's the point where I'm at especially today is that you know this spiritual journey is not meant to be lived on the other side you know mm. it's meant to be lived on earth and for a very long time even after awakening I was like well, actually, now I was right all this time, you know, like there is another side, like there is an invisible world. So let me just stay there. Like it, it, it kind of like made it legit, even more legit for me to be mm. living on that side. But actually, mm. what I realized today is that I am here for a reason. Like I chose to experience life on Earth for a reason. And so living on the other side goes against what I chose for myself. And so I'm mm. not honoring like my essence. I'm not honoring who I am. I'm not honoring my mission or my purpose by staying there. And so mm. now I'm just relearning to to ground completely, like to be present. That's what mm. I realized. It's basically like mm. all about being present and feeling your body, you know, like feeling the experiences here on earth, bringing mm. that knowledge and grounding it on earth. So that's, where I'm, I'm currently at. Mm, yeah, it's like grounding spiritual wisdom in the earthly yeah. realm. Because you did mention a word there, and this is it's a, it's something I certainly haven't sort of crystallized just yet. Mm. Because you you mentioned a word there, which is really interesting, which is dissociation, right? Mm. And it is a again, it's a bit you know we were talking a bit about a dance. It is a bit of a dance in the sense of like when is it dissociation mm. and when are you having like a profound spiritual experience it's like when yeah. are you using spirituality or out-of-body experiences or astral projection as a way yeah. to escape the earthly realm you know it's a or when are you using spirituality as like spiritual bypassing or mm. when when are you like listening to your intuition but actually it's your ego your greed your anxiety your fear it's a really sort of it's a complicated it's not clear cut basically yeah. when is it like a mental health problem and when are you sort of spiritually growing and also who gets to say so it's a really you know it's again it's like this dance of trying to but I do think, though, I do think the key, and I think you used to wear there many times, which is just you just have to spend even I think even if you're someone who chat, finds it difficult to go out, mm. I think it's still really, really, really important to just practice as much grounding as humanly mm. possible, because at some point you will be able to go out, but you still have to have a safe passage back down. Yeah. So, yeah, I think actually the key there, I think the key there is just like profound grounding basically yeah what are your thoughts yeah yeah I totally agree with you I think you you touched on some interesting points in there and namely like mainly around mental health and, and yeah. spirituality and I have some not extreme like uh, views on it but I don't think that everyone would agree on me so disclaimer I'm not a therapist like I'm not a professional I'm just talking from my own like experience and from my own like point of view, I think that they're highly correlated. I think, you know, from my own experience, I, so pre-awakening, I had um, this huge period where I was, you know, 
I thought I was like psychotic. Like I, I just mm. was, you know, having all of these surreal experiences, but they were only like, they're very like normal in the spiritual world. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you know, everything that you're talking about, like astral projection or like, you know, um, lucid dreamings and kind of like you're in a phase where y y you think you're hallucinating, but you're just perhaps having visions, you know? And, mm. and so I had that. Um, and I, I didn't like my senses again, you know, th that's the thing. It's like, you have an intuition that tells you it's fine. Like, it's okay. This is normal. What's happening. You're just discovering that there is more to the world we're living. But then you know, everyone around you and, you know, societal consensus makes you think different. It's like, mm. you're crazy. You can't have such a thing as visions, you know, like you're, you're being psychotic, you know, or, or you're, you're bipolar or like, you know, whatever, they will like find a term to use. Um, and so I remember, you know, like even seeing a psychiatrist and they put me on medication and then like, mm. you know, I was seeing a therapist and, and what happened is that, you know, it was like the medications were making me like even like ill, they were making me ill. They mm. were harming like my, my physical body. And thank God I had the discernment and I had the kind of like, you know, strength and courage to say, no, like this is mm. not for me. And I think that's what's sad. It's like a lot of people like are unable to do that because they think that, oh, they gave me medications. This is what I should be taking to get better. But they're not aware that it's actually poison they're poisoning you. They're making you, you know, even more numb to the reality that we're living in because they mm. want to keep you in cage, you know? And so I think that's when for me, I had a kind of like um, a deep moment of realization and well, actually mental health and, you know, everything that we talk about in the, like as in spiritual gifts or like, you know, in the spiritual world or like when you're going through like awakening is highly correlated you know um and it's it's just if you take the example of neurodiversity as well for example like you know for instance it's just people that are highly sensitive that are more connected to the other side and here we're calling them disabled no you are not disabled you know you on the contrary you can tell me more about life than i can you know and mm. and so it's just the world how how the world like is constructed and i think it's the key to actually be able to see that and discern is by being grounded by being highly like anchored on earth although some bits of our mind can be up there but by being anchored we can see you know like what is actually happening you know what mm. i mean um so yeah for That's those of you, for those who don't know, can you explain he the Heidegger concept to people? Sorry. For those um, who don't know, can you explain Heidegger to people? Heidegger. Isn't that what you just said? Did you say Heidegger? No, no, no. no. Oh, I didn't you? say I that. Heard, I heard. <laughs> I heard like I thought it was some sort of theory <laughs> that you were just talking about, which is called the Heidegger theory or something. No. <laughs> That's so funny. So. Let's scratch that. You obviously didn't say <laughs> Heidegger. Yeah, no, I think you are, I think you're right. I think we're maybe, I don't think that, you know, I think that psychologists, when they are faced with someone who are having a spiritual awakening journey, I actually just don't think they understand. I don't think mm. they I don't think they are ill-meaning or out to get people mm. or caging them. I think they're just unaware. You know, certainly there will be some people out there who are not very nice and they're trying to control people. But I also think I think from the I probably assume from the bottom of their heart, they probably think they're helping you. Which obviously they're not because they, I also, I mean, I think that for some people, medication can be really you really helpful, but for a lot of people. It's really not. So yeah, it's an interesting, I think medication and mental health, because I think also, again, it's a dance, right? Because some people are just psychotic. 
whilst other people are having a spiritual experience. But again, it's like, who gets to say and how yeah. would you know? And so it's a really, really complicated sort of mess to dance around. And yes, it's like awakening and grounding, you know, it's almost like a ceremony or a practice or a workshop in itself, which is called awakening and grounding, which is like how to safely be connected, but also how to safely get you back down to earth. Yeah. And I mean, I think what you have received, which is great, is a sense of belonging to a spiritual community who says, actually, if you leave your body and you get a really funny experience, I've had that too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it makes you feel less crazy. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's, it's super important. And that's like, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm yeah. doing with Enlighten. It's because we need a place like this. Like, I, I, I'm tired yeah. of this being, you know, the best kept secret on earth. Like, this is yeah. not a secret anymore. Like, I should, like, go to school and learn about my awakening. You know, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I don't care about, like, the history of, I don't know which country, you know, like, it's interesting, yeah. yes. But, like... I need to learn more about like myself, like who yeah. am I? What am I doing here? Like, give me the tools to be able to navigate this this human experience from a spiritual, like you know, point of view. Let's say, but yeah, yeah. I hopefully one day we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, I mean, I've been so lucky because I had my grandmother who taught me to ground myself, and I had a spiritual teacher. Mm -hmm here in London who helped me to grab myself so that's always been really helpful you know I had one experience once and this is just, this is the experience that always comes to me where it felt like I was like literally floating in the universe and I could see the sun breaking the crust mm -hmm. of the earth and I could see the sun sort of coming around I mean it was like my mind was just like <laughs> you know it was beautiful but also, thank God, I had a teacher who was able to like, and let's come back down <laughs> again, basically. Yeah. You know, otherwise, I think an experience like that can be <laughs> profoundly destabilizing. Oh, yeah. 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 hundred um, percent. I think so. I, I've done a lot of... of <laughs> so I'm kind of like obsessed about like just trying different modalities and and, you know, like kind of like flying you know through those modalities and just like discovering how they impact me my consciousness like my soul and all of that but I remember once I was having like a shamanic healing session and and at that at that period I remember like whenever I would do a healing like even a sound healing for instance like I would like elevate so high like my soul like would just go up that my body like would start like spasming you know like mm -hmm. I, like my, my body wasn't wasn't handling it um and so I was in this and it was like mainly in group settings so like you know I, it would go unnoticed but like um I was in this one-on-one -on -one session and and my body starts doing that and the practitioner who's uh, an amazing, amazing lady has been like who I consider to be like a guide and a teacher as well. And um, she she basically just like uh, did something which she explained afterwards. But I felt it to be the same. I felt that I was like pulled deep down into like a cocoon, like into the core mm. of of Mother Earth, and that's what she did. And that was like my first real experience of grounding you know of mm. deep like grounding as in beyond just putting my feet on on grass and saying that I'm mm. grounding mm. and I found it like at the end of the session she, she was explaining to me that like my my I was just elevating so much that my body couldn't couldn't um couldn't handle it and so she needed to to bring me back down and she brought me to the core of mother earth and for me that was just such a beautiful and unique experience to just you know be feeling that love you know mm. that nurture that care that while we're wor walking on earth we're not necessarily feeling you know mm. and that was my kind of like very first connection to mother earth and that's when i kind of like realized the power she holds you know for us over us and how we 
kind of like must go back to her in our everyday life because mm. otherwise we won't be able to to I was I'm tempted to say even like fulfill our purpose if it's not with her nurture and care sure sure so what kind of uh meditation are you practicing these days like what does your meditation practice look like so my meditation practice i um it varies a lot but these days i'm doing um a lot of somatic breathing so it's something that i've discovered um it's eyes open long slow deep breath in and out through the nose and it's really like um meant to ground you again like you know because when you close i don't know if you experience the same but like if when you meditate like close eyes you can easily like go up so it's really meant to kind of like ground and i usually just start my day with it like 10 minutes and then i follow it by like normal meditation you know depending on on the days uh can be like anything up to 30 minutes i think that's the 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 maximum i can i can do uh perhaps 40 sometimes if you know i really battle with myself um <laughs> but i find it enough and then at night it's usually you know somatic movements um and then either visualization or again like just normal meditation mm. Mm. and what do you find what is challenging about meditation <sighs> i think it's it's definitely i've had i've been struggling with this like for you know quite a long time whereas um if i'm not like focusing on something i e you know like my breathing or visualization or if you know for instance somatic uh, meditation is like with eyes open i find it very difficult to kind of like um embody the notion the notion of being the observer you know like of just letting my thoughts pass by and me observing them and so mm. that's what i've kind of like been working on i think also just trying to to connect with the sensations that i have within my body while i meditate versus you know letting my thoughts take me uh, other places that's mm. those two things specifically i find challenging but i've been like actively working on Mm that's really really interesting. Yeah, I mean most of my meditation is also mostly like breath work, visualization and then observing and seeing seeing if any messages are coming through or just like a quiet nothingness which is quite nice. So you interact with quite a few spiritual practitioners obviously through enlightened and especially connected with London. As like for someone who has probably an insight into the practitioners more than anyone else almost. <laughs> what do you think are some of the main problems that we are facing as like a spiritual industry call it this called mm. a spiritual industry like what are some of the main yeah. problems that we're facing would you say yeah so i think that uh, first of all i want to say how like deeply grateful i am you know to be able to to just interact with so many practitioners and and be fully immersed in this beautiful wonderful industry i felt it was important for me to kind of like express that that gratitude before talking about problems you know <laughs> <laughs> sure 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 um i think that the main problem is that because it's not something that is mainstream yet it's first like very difficult to discover you know like as someone completely on the outside uh you know we briefly talked about it before like if you don't know you don't know you know what i mean like if you don't know you're scared to know as well because the way this world is kind of like presented the way these modalities are presented they can be scary you know like you tell someone you're going to a shamanic healing session oh my god shamans like oh, like what's going to happen to me and and i think that's the first like hurdle that's the first big problem that we must tackle if we want this to kind of like widespread i think 
this and then the trust issue it's like okay well then if if you if you overcome that first hurdle of being scared or like not knowing and you start to know like people and you start who do you trust you know mm. like who's uh, uh, there is a wide range of practitioners that are doing many different different things and you know just like in any world they are like um ones that i'm inclined to say good and bad but you know what's good what's bad but i think that you can always like find some dangerous experiences or not so pleasant experiences in any place you go to and in this world it's the same right mm -hmm. like sure, some yeah. people are not like properly trained and they are offering like their services whereas no like it's not you know you're on your awakening journey you discover some spiritual gifts that do not give you the right to go and heal people with it like you need to go and have like a proper training and i think that's something that um happens a lot where a healer that is not fully healed but at the same time you can never like be fully healed but you know what i mean like not properly trained doesn't like have um the actual like tools and skill sets to be at service to others through those healing is still offering that and that can be dangerous that can mm. you know uh, when you don't offer the proper guidance i think that you you find that a lot and there is like no way for you to know who you can trust or not unless it's like through word of mouth yeah yeah um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, so it's yeah. like the ethics of it yeah no it's yeah. something i've thought about a lot is that there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of young people coming up into this space like 20 year olds saying that they're going to do healing and readings for people and they've done a couple of readings and like i'm going to charge for it now and it's yeah. like it's like this is serious work you know? yeah as, yeah as, I, exactly. a, a psychologist a psychologist trains for like six years yeah you know it's a long training mm. to become a therapist or a psychologist or a doctor like for for a reason you mm. know because you need a ton of experience of dealing with people um and dealing with all the different ways in which that people can show up so yeah no i i think you are right yeah, yeah this is one of the main challenges yeah yeah um and and i think it can be very dangerous i think that that you know something mm. else that we're seeing a lot is is you know the the the, the, the kind of like advance of plant medicine and ceremonies and and that as well you know like mm. plant medicine are not to be messed with messed up like you know messed with and it's it's a full process where you know you need the preparation you need to have a proper guidance during the ceremony and you need to have an integration phase afterwards mm. and a lot of like you know um practitioners or like you know people can just come and offer you certain ceremonies with certain you know like medicine that are mm. yes good for you but you still need to have the proper like guidance to go through it mm. because that can be very dangerous otherwise yeah no i agree i know that that's another it is another serious issue which i'm it's almost like uh, but i mean i suppose you're already illegal but it's a bit like when lsd came on the market you know and mm. people went slightly nuts you know, yeah. I think LSD can probably yeah. be a healthy experience for some people, but again, you know, it can be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, it can be misused and so can yeah. like psilocybin and ayahuasca or DMT or, and it can be mm -hmm. like, yeah, it can be misused and that can be quite dangerous for people again, because the thing is, like you just said, if you don't have an integration period afterwards, then you can lose your shit, right? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, it's a it's it's a fascinating thing to consider. So, proper training is really really important. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like how do we know who to trust? Which is obviously you're a part of building yeah. a space where yeah. you can know that if you go to this practitioner, they're a good practitioner mm -hmm. basically because you have chosen them. Yeah, yeah, and I I think also like something that we're building is really like uh, a kind of like vetting review system that is more scalable you know like that that where yeah. you go to, to where you when you come to us basically you'll be able to directly see like you know the, the feed like the the reviews and ratings of each practitioner and you'll be able to see who's someone to be trusted and who's not well you are all to be trusted because for now i'm that's what i'm doing you know like uh, we've been selecting everyone that's part of of enlightened 
But I think that we're also looking at solving this problem at scale. You know, mm. um, how can we make it that, you know, we have uh, 300,000 practitioners on our platform and you go there and you know, you still know which one to be trusted, you mm. know? Yeah, 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 sure. Any more challenges that you'd like to bring to the surface? Hmm. I think yes. So there is there is something that I've noticed, which is a kind of like split or dichotomy or like, you know, kind of like um, they are obviously different worlds within the spiritual healing world. But I feel like there is a big split between this like new age healing movement, you know, or new age, like kind of like. Uh, practitioners and then you have the more like traditionally rooted anchored ones which is not like which, which is good like mm. in a sense like you need di you need diversity you need like a variety of of modalities and of 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 um traditions or outlooks or approaches but like the challenge that i see is that there is a divide between both you know ah. they don't necessarily like mix up um, or it's difficult for them to mix up. And I find that to be a shame because I believe that, you know, the way the world is going is that we are making this more mainstream, or at least, you know, that's something I'm working to do, like making it more mm. mainstream, like, and assisting, like collective awakening through it. Because if we want really to to kind of like, raise our collective vibration like expand our collective consciousness we will need to make this ma mainstream right like this mm. and and i feel like and the more i go at it the more i'm like there is a huge divide and how can we bring that together um mm. i i don't want to see a world where you know like uh there is separation within mm. like this um so i think that's that's very that's another challenge that I've noticed. Ah, interesting. So it's like a divide between like the new age and the more traditional healing, spiritual healing modalities, yeah. basically. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you when you say it, I have also noticed that it, yeah, it's that's an interesting because I suppose there's like judgment and sort of yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. huh, thank and, you for yeah. 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 I, I think there is this 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 bit oh, oh. <laughs> my cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he cute. wanted to be seen. He wanted to come to the to be seen here. Um, but yeah, so, so I think that there is this 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 judgment, this this um, somehow fear of making this too commercial, you know, or mm. or or removing the essence of it, and so that's that's actually like a rational fear. Like I wouldn't want, you know to remove the, the essence of this this incredible work you know and yeah. i wouldn't want appropriation to happen and so it's like it's literally like how can we bring it as one and you know avoid that appropriation avoid that over commercialization avoid this like mm. keep the essence basically that's the biggest challenge that is happening yeah yeah interesting Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. So on a couple of my other podcasts, I've actually given people a bit of a short tarot reading at Ooh, the end of the nice. would you <laughs> would you like a would you like a three card short tarot reading? Would you be up yes. for that? Yes, let's yeah? do it. Let's yeah. do it. Obviously, <laughs> this one is public, so it'll, you know, if this it'll be a bit more sort of on the generic gentler side. Then... Okay. You, you can give me the details afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the dirty details, not only joking. Right, I'm going to pull three cards and then let's see what shows up. Ah, interesting. So... The three cards that I pulled for you today are the Seven of Wands. Mm -hmm. I have pulled the Knight of Chalices. And I have also pulled the Six of Wands. So it's quite interesting that we're going from seven till six as well. Um, as you can see on the seven of on the seven of wands on my deck, there's this fellow who's like 
kicking of crocodiles basically you can see that he's like he's fighting off these crocodiles and there's several crocodiles coming and i think that what this card is a bit of a journey here i think i think that what this card is suggesting is that i think there's a lot of fires going on around you right now there's a bit of challenges in quite a few different areas of your life both work and personal life and I suspect to a degree this is feeling somewhat overwhelming right it's like oh my god mm. there's so many of them um but what I quite like about this card is that he's it's got seven ones on it right and seven is also quite a spiritual number in many mm. ways and what it's trying to say and I think the message that's coming through there is to just know that even though it's feeling overwhelming you've still got so much strength to go like the seven you know, there's like, there's loads of more sticks to use, basically. Yeah. This character is not out of sticks just yet, and nor will he ever become out of sticks, basically. So even though challenges come, you're really able to like bat him off and go, okay, next one, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think there's something about really um, being trustworthy about that. I think there's something about... If someone is presenting something to you, and it's see, and there's something which tells you this is too good to be true. Like I wonder if someone or someone or something is going to present an idea, mm. a project, something to you, and there's a thought. And on the surface, it's like, wow, that's amazing. But mm. actually, there's some, there's there's some, there's in, your intuition is saying this mm. is too good to be true. It's probably too good to be true. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably too good to be true. However, and I think it's interesting, I think that, I think this is a distraction. Mm -hmm. I think it's a distraction, which is trying to pull you in a slightly different direction. Well, it's actually, you just need to stay true to what you, yeah. what it is that you want to do and like water your plants and stay true to your project and keep on going basically and like keep really focused with it. Um, because yeah, I think this is I think this is someone who's like, hey, you should work with me because I'm amazing. Actually, you're like, do I though? I I can do this by myself. Not that you need to do it by yourself, but um, yeah, that's what I think. That's what I sense. That's very spot on, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's very spot on. Yeah, 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 it's very spot on. I I I just had a discussion uh, about something that you said <laughs> seems too good right. to be true so. <laughs> right yeah. yeah I wonder if it is obviously it might yeah. be amazing but there's something which tells me that it might be too good to be true so yeah. um Maya where can people find you online you can find me on the enlightened website <laughs> you can find me on Instagram you can find me on LinkedIn you can send me an email send me a fax uh a pigeon <laughs> brilliant so loads of places online but it's enlightened yeah. events right yeah enlightened that event um Perfect. and then my instagram i'm at endlessly maya basically true and you've also got two sub stacks right you got the sub stack for enlightened oh, yes. and you've yeah. also got the transcending maya sub stack right exactly yeah so it's mindful moments by enlightened and then transcending maya Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This has been a pleasure. And I hope that everybody enjoys enjoyed listening to this episode. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you.